Hi there, let's begin another episode of what is happening in Brazil. We we'll start the show with the latest news from our country. Tune in. This week, a portal to register assistance actions in food donation locations was launched in Brazil. The initiative is part of the National Campaign of Solidarity with the Brazilian People, run by social movements and other entities that cater to the populace. Since the worsening of the COVID-19 pandemic, solidarity has become one of the main ways in which to organize the workers' struggle and save lives. Beyond food drives, these entities and movements are providing medical and psychological assistance to those who need it. The objective of the online platform is to integrate these initiatives that are ongoing in the country's ghettos. For the organizers, these deeds of solidarity are not restricted to just emergency care for the families, but also question the very societal model we live in. These actions are being talked over with municipalities and registered in the National Reference Center for Social Assistance. Deeds of solidarity have also been a focus point for the Landless Workers Movement, MST. Since the 13th of March, MST has adhered to the guidelines set forth by the World Health Organization and is urging everyone to stay home. But in the fields, workers wearing personal protective equipment to avoid contagion have been ramping up the production of food to guarantee for and cater to the urgent needs of vulnerable urban areas, which are still awaiting the emergency basic income promised by the federal government. In the poor areas of many of the country's cities, eco-friendly food is being distributed, as well as hand sanitizer, which is being manufactured by the entity in some locations. Popular ancestral healing practices are being revived by social movements. An example of this are the health sectors within the Landless Workers Movement that for years has been incentivizing the study and application of traditional medicine with healers, spiritual seers and local therapists as protagonists. They advocate for self-healing, mental, physical and spiritual health. They are the witches and shamans of the people's health and politics. For us, from the Landless Workers Movement, today health care is of the utmost importance. We have to discuss issues in politics about caring for one another, about integrative practice, working together with our people, and the importance of rescuing our traditions. Our healers are brought to our health centers. We bring them because of the importance of this kind of care for our people. We seek to not only take care of the physical but also people's mental health. Sometimes they aren't sick, they just need to talk to someone, to vent, and many times they aren't able to do this. Here we have natural remedies, manufactured by settlers of the land reform and those in camps. We have medicine from all states of the country here. Each state has its sector, its culture and knowledge. There is a dire need of rescuing traditions, because in truth, the witches, who are considered witches by the oppressive capitalist system, are nothing more than healers and transmitters of positive and healthy energies, with knowledge of nature and the divine. They heal without making any money, and also without exploiting the environment. More and more, women are becoming mentally ill in this political contest of budget cuts. So, to talk about health with our women makes us stronger and makes them see the importance of this struggle, fighting for our rights, seeking a better and healthier life. In today's Culture Talk segment, get to know a book that talks about a little piece of Africa in the city of São Paulo. Writer and sociologist Tadeu Casula showcases traditional stories and cultural manifestations that are little known and gave birth to one of the city's most African regions, the North Side. Learn a little about the work Casa Verde São Paulo's Little Africa and some of its characters. 
I was born and raised here in the Casa Verde neighborhood, in São Paulo's north side, observing all the families, the cultural manifestations, the movement of the black population here in the neighborhood. I always wondered why there were so many black families living in this part of São Paulo. As I inserted myself into the academic world, I began understanding the importance of organizing all these contacts that I already had due to this direct relationship with the area, its culture and the African references we have here. In my case, these references ended up materializing in the book Casa Verde, São Paulo's Little Africa. The provocation in the book is precisely to raise people's awareness of this debate, so they may in fact recognize that these cultural manifestations give legitimacy to and shape São Paulo's cultural identity. This is important because this is a black thing. And we black folks have to show others what we do and why we are here. Our ancestors brought over this culture and this religiosity that we preserve here till this day. People have to know this. It's about being able to show what we have been like since childhood and the legacy we leave for the younger people with this book, the story of this neighborhood. We must leave this legacy behind for the young. What we have built cannot be forgotten. Now it's time to get to know the sounds and flavors of our country a little better. It's Brazilianism. So chef, yeah. Hi there, my name is Chef Eric Rodriguez and today I will introduce you to a maroon cucumber stew. Para começar, vamos fazer um sofrito. To start, let's mix the bell pepper, cebola, onion, ginger, o gengibre e a pimentinha. And chili. Dende quanto basta. Put in some palm oil and heat it up till it gets a golden hue. Para dourar um pouquinho. After it dries up a bit, we can place the maroon cucumber inside. Now, let's add ground black pepper to your liking. Now, the coconut milk. Now, put the contents in a pressure cooker. After it starts whistling, let's add the coriander. Our cucumber is cooked. Now, let's prepare the stew. I'm gonna use a mud pot and place inside of it the bell pepper, tomatoes and onion. Let's make some layers. In the first layer, at the bottom, put the maroon cucumbers and other ingredients. Then, pour some of the sauce. Then another layer of maroon cucumbers. Um pouco do caldo. And a little sauce on top to wrap things up. Do prato montado, a gente leva... After the dish is set up, we put it on the fire for two minutes. After this time up, we went things by adding a little powered EM, and it's all set. That's all for today, folks. We'll see you next week.